This is old Kim. This is not a spring chicken today on our Cans Daily. Yeah. We have, starting with, this is Cans 2013. The quote of the day from Armand Escalante, director of Haley. Which I think is a film in competition. Mm -hmm. I think that we were right to show violence in this film in a way that makes people think and leads them to the conclusion that something is wrong. It means that they're, they're noted for violence in their cinema, so they include violence in a movie they made out of that. So mm -hmm. here's the neat thing: we give, we try to every day give you a list of people who's actually there. Most of them I have no clue. You know, actually, fan bling, fan 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 Bing 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 Jessica Bell, uh, Bernice uh, Bujo. Um, Carmen Chaplin and Dolores Chaplin. It makes you wonder if they're doing something for Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, well, his grand. Okay, uh, one of the cha uh, one of the gra Chaplin granddaughters is in. Um, uh, she's in the Borgias, I think. Mm -hmm. so. Brian De Palma, yes. Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, because Great Gatsby, yeah. right? Colin Egglesfield, remember from TV? He's been in future films late of late. Yep. Yeah. Armand Escalante. Well, we got uh, Giles Coulier, which we. Sandy Crawford, um, um, let's see, going down the list of Naomi, Naomi Harris, David Hasselhoff, naturally. Oh, of course. The Hoff is everywhere. Be big in Germany. He's very big they in Germany. They love him. He's the greatest singer ever lived in Germany. Is he? Yep. Yep. Uh, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Emma Watson, Robin Wright. Yeah, I, I know, uh, let's see, uh, here we go. <laughs> my thing is set for my hands, not for hers. Uh, so I know, so I try to get her. I know, that's how you tell us live, folks. Uh, actually, Frida Pinto, which is a big name. Uh, uh, Pat Galton. I Well, I know somebody that's there. Who? It's, it's Christopher Waltz. He's oh, there. and Christoph is there because he's on the jury. And so is Kate Capshaw and Steven Spielberg because I saw them last night. And they're on the jury. And by Lane. Yes. So, and uh, Phoebe Price is Vincent DePaul. And, and Vincent DePaul. So there's some of these people that aren't on the list that actually should be ways is, you know, we back down and then hey, we're going to go. We got um, uh, in competition, um, Ozon discovers a young and pretty muse. That's the, that's the best the, uh, the thing in the movie. So uh, I end up doing this. I know this. I hate the thing that my mouth doesn't work on this thing. So. I know, she's certainly young and beautiful too. She's hardly surprising that Francois Ozone has succumbed, succumbed to the charms of Marlene Vosch. This model has awakened the erotic side of the direct. Basically, you can tell it's a French film, folks. <laughs> and being a fresh sensuality to the prestigious list of actresses, he has enjoyed tormenting or glorifying throughout his career. That sounds somewhat like the movie, um, you know, like eight, seven and a half, or eight and a half. Oh, it does? Yeah, where basically um, it was about Frederick Ferrellini and the problems he was having with all these actors and the movies he made. So, And here she abandons the catwalk to take her first steps into the film world after two appearances for My Piece, My Piece of the Pie and Aracati, Sequele Jour du Nuit. Marie Vox, 23, plays an adolescent who sells her body. She does so not through coercion but for simple pleasure during a hotel encounter with a partner she meets on a social network. Yeah, yeah, social networking involved with, with, with that now. So, you know, this is a competition movie, folks. Ah. Um. Uh, okay, uh, basically, we, uh, Ozon sees Young and Beautiful as the feminine alter ego of his latest film in the house, 2012. He revisits the theme of adolescence already tackled with gusto in a short film shot through this, uh, with sexuality no less typical, which means he's got the money to make a feature version of one of his shorts is what it amounts. Mm. But we got one, in, we got Sofia Coppola in uh, Uncertain Regard, which is bling ring. Yeah, in fact, one of my friends had told me that he's in the movie with that. Yeah, but yeah. supposed to, I've been getting, uh, this and the Bamboo movie are basically getting a lot of stuff sent to me, so. And of course, this is Cop Sofia Coppola and the Coppola family. For months, they stalked the stars without anyone noticing. There were seven of them, just turned 18, and the media nickname, The Bling Ring. Sophia Coppola takes them as the subject for her latest film with Emma Watson in the role of a little vixen in search of all that glitters. It does sound really, really Hollywood, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember when, that, when she was dressed for that last year over at, uh, not this year, but the year before at, the, at uh, whatever that stupid thing is in, in Palm Springs. Uh, Palm Springs Festival? Uh, well, no, the one, that thing, the Coachella. 
Oh, yeah. yes. She was going around in short shorts, really short, you know, actually, no, we, we know what short shorts are, and they had a tank top and stuff, trying to look like a vixen. Mm. So she's come a long way since, of course, what, the, the magic spells are Hermione Granger. Um, she, Emma has put away her blood red and golden scarf to join Sophia Coppola's bling ring about a gang of teens obsessed by celebs and fame. Oh, Ooh, she plays the role of Nikki, a sassy go-go dancer and a yoga teacher. I, I, you know, I don't think, I've ever seen her doing any dancing, so um, yoga may be dancing, though. Okay, to get into this very different role, Emma drew inspiration from reality TV icons such as Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie of The Simple Life Aid. Oh my god. <laughs> And Sophia also sent her copies of Pretty Wild, a reality TV show featuring Alexis Amirius, a member of the Real Bling Ring, a gang of teenagers and young adults which held sway in Hollywood in 2009. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, oh, they actually, they were thefts. Yeah, they were They were thieves. They were crooks. Oh, this is where they sit there and tell people don't put on Twitter until after you've been there for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, they basically, they picked up information. We tell people not to tell anybody where you're going, that you're not going to be there, folks. Because what happened is they followed their Twitter feed and it says, well, the stars they venerated were out and about. Seven members of the Bling Ring broke into their homes and made off, weighed down with clothes and personal effects. The victims included Orlando Bloom and Lindsay Lohan, as well as Paris Hilton, who agreed to appear in the film. See, in part, of it, it's like, remember, you remember the Paris Hilton's place was broken into? Yeah. It was and all over the, the news. I remember when they got caught, it was all over the news, too. Wow. They tried to get away with it because they were teenagers. Oh. Yeah, you know, and then because a lot of problems, is some of the things they heisted, nobody wanted to be seen, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, uh, a fable of a typical generation who grew up with the internet and reality TV. I, I hope I'm not being too judgmental, but it's true. I observed them with a the, the certain distance. I think the film both criticize and go, it, it glorifies them, folks. That's what it is. You make a movie, I mean, I mean her father always made movies glorifying something, you know, which was what it was, so. Yeah, here we got the... Uh, it runs in the family. Remember we saw the other couple at the, Sophie, at the uh, Sony party? Yeah, so we got, uh, now we got a press conference by Ahmad Ascalanti. Basically, uh, it's a... Remember the quote of the day? Yeah. It's, it's a decisive look at Mexican society. They happen to make God off. You ever watch that Mexicans, uh, 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 soap opera from Mexico? Those things waste people like you. Okay, it used to be, when I was young, younger, I used to do things in Great Britain like the Avengers and and, uh, and the Saint and other things. And my, my father would say, well, how, how good a movie was it then? Well, they knocked off 11 people in the, in the episode of the Avengers. My father said, God, that's going to be a good show today. Mm -hmm. That's what they decided. The more people you axed in the in a show, they really go really well at it in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, so Armand Escalante has a theme of violence in this film. It is not a film that sits out to destroy the Mexican tourist industry. The reality on the ground in Mexico is actually worse than what I show in the film. I wanted to examine violence by putting it back in its context rather than simply showing it and to focus specifically on how some people cause it while others are witnesses. I wanted to show violence as it really is and film it in an original way in order to draw the public's attention. I, I was in the Wild Bunch, and I think I remember Sam Peckinpah saying the very same thing. And it was oh, one, really? one of the most violent westerns ever made. Well, they had two guys wiped out about five or six hundred Mexicans, so they basically got, I mean, we're talking machine gun fire, handguns, all this stuff, so. <laughs> they always got that. That's a filmmaker's excuse. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I saw a movie last night, uh, an art film, where basically, um, all the people were trapped in a bunker uh, during World War III, and basically all the guys raped all the women, and then the women raped all the women. <laughs> but that's what they said. We, were, we weren't glorifying rape and, rape and sex and violence. We were just trying to show you what happens to civilized men and women when they know they have no future in front of them. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happened? Yeah. Uh, I got it. The first sequence of the film is a result of several images which came to mind as I wrote the screenplay. Then I wanted to see, I wanted to change the first scene during the edit, but it didn't work out. The image was just too powerful. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel Reyes, who is the co-writer for the movie, is again on the violence which underlies the entire film. This is a very violent film, yeah. I can tell. It would have not been social. It would have been socially irresponsible not to talk of the violence in Mexico because it's there. But our film is not a political statement on the life in Mexico today. Violence is not solely a Mexican issue. We can all relate to these issues. 
which means that they're, they're making commercial film in Mexico is what it means. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, that's our, our basic information for today. We did put up a video on MBM News Video and the Travel Suite about the opening night party at the Electrolux, though, so you can go see what, uh, a little glimpse into glimpse what they of, were doing. Yeah. So I guess until tomorrow, this is old Kim. And this is not Mr. Ben Chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to uh, www.mbm.com or www.thetravelsuite.com oh, okay. yeah, yeah. on the internet. Yeah, so wherever you're following us, of course, subscribe, but also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, but come back because we'll be, we'll be doing cams daily through the end of the Cam Film Festival, which is May 26th. So join us for more. Oh, and yes, we do have other programming besides cams, too. <laughs> anyway, happy cams 2013, and let's hope the skies clear out. <laughs>